Hi designers, this is Rebecca, and today I'm going to show you how to make a simple Eco Tanaka inspired character in Illustrator. So first we're going to set up a new file, and I want this to be easily um, able to separate into square grids. So I'm just going to use inches today um, using a print option. Let's change that to inches. Let's make it three inches by four inches. Since this is vector art, we can always expand it as much as we need, right? So I'll go ahead and hit create. Then from there, I'm going to go into my rectangular grid tool. It's underneath the line segment tool in your toolbar. And I'm going to double click on it to bring up the rectangular grid options. So I want my width to be three inches and my height to be four inches. And I want my horizontal dividers to be two and my vertical divider, no, I'm sorry, horizontal dividers to be three and my vertical dividers to be two and I'm gonna hit okay. Now I'm gonna click in the top corner of the um, artboard and then when my pop-up comes up, just hit okay and it'll drop in this perfectly, uh, this grid with the perfect squares, right? So from there, I'm gonna turn this into guides. So I'm using my selection tool. I'm gonna go up to view, so my grid is selected and go to guides and make guides. So that's view, guides, make guides. And now I have this little uh, split up artboard, right? So all we need to do now is just create some rectangles. So I'm gonna go into my properties panel. I'm gonna change my fill. Um, my first one, well, I'll make it just like uh, Tanako did. So I'll give it a nice gray. And I don't want a stroke, so I'm going to turn off the stroke to none. And I'll go ahead and start drawing my first rectangle in this top corner here, and it'll snap to my grid. I'll draw another one in this one. And then I can do one here and another one here. Great as well as on this side. Cool. So that was easy enough. Now I can use my delete anchor, my, um, yeah, delete anchor point tool underneath the pen tool here. And I'm going to select this one top one there to get rid of that anchor point. I'm going to do the same over here on this one. And I'm going to do the same on this bottom corner. It's already taking shape. Great. Let's go back to my rectangle tool. I'm gonna make sure nothing's selected. So you can hit deselect or you can just click outside of your artboard where there's no objects with your selection tool. So I'll go ahead and choose the rectangle tool again. This time I'm gonna change my fill to black and I'm gonna click and drag here and I'm gonna click and drag here and one below. Great, another one. I'm just gonna do the mirror on the other side. Excellent. One more. Great. So then go ahead and use that uh, delete anchor point tool one more time. Going to click on this one. Pew. And on this side over here. Oops. Undo. Let's look at our layers panel. We're going to lock that one. I'll double click on my properties panel to collapse it. I'll just lock all these gray ones for a second. Now I got my black anchor point selected and I can unlock those in my layers point, uh, panel. Okay. Easy peasy. So now let's go ahead and make another one, um, another square. This time I'm going to fill it. I'll have her wear purple today. So I'm going to start her kimono down here. Great. And then make another one on this side. But I want this fill color to be just a bit different. So I'm going to double click on my swatches panel. I like to click on this uh, only web colors just to make my options a little bit easier. And let's choose that little lighter shade for that one. That works, just a little variation, right? I'll choose my delete anchor point tool. I'm gonna click on this corner here, and then I'm gonna click on this corner and see if it selects the right one, and it did. If it didn't, just lock those gray layers again in your layers panel, and uh, then you can select the purple one, no problem. All right, I'm gonna do one more colored rectangle over on this side. This is also part of her kimono, so um, I can just look in here and see if I find a color I like. 
maybe a little different. Ooh, I like that. So I picked that swatch there. That looks fantastic. And then let's go ahead and work up here. So with this rectangle, I'm going to go down about two thirds of the way. That looks good. And I'll pick, let's double click on the swatches panel and see what we can find here. Not that color. Nope, let's do something softer. Too soft. One more option. This one. There we go, nice violet. Oh, lovely. I love it. Okay, now let's go ahead and get some circles going. So I'm going to change to my ellipse tool. I'm going to start from, let me deselect real quick. There we go. I'm going to start from this bottom corner and draw up. And I'm going to hold down the shift key. And I'm not going to go to the full edge, but that looks pretty good. I'm going to fill this with red to represent the sun and the Japanese flag, and that looks nice. Now let's do a few more. I'm going to zoom in. You know, this red is very punchy. Let me make it a darker red. It's just there. That's nice. Okay. I'm going to zoom in, and we're going to make some circles for her eyeshadow. So we're going to do that in this area here. I'm going to start at this top corner and pull down, hold down my shift key to make a perfect circle. It's not going to go all the way down to this baseline, maybe I'm going to say three quarters of the way. Now I want to duplicate this one. So I'm just going to um, choose my selection tool, hold down option or alt, click and drag to the right and hold down shift to lock it. There we go. So I think I'm satisfied with keeping the same eyeshadow color as the flag red up in the top corner. Um, we also need some lips. So let's go ahead and while we still have this one selected, hold down option or alt and click and drag down here. And this is going to fall about here. So not at the baseline. We want it to be centered uh, horizontally. So that's perfect. Oh, let's make it a little smaller. It's a bit crazy. Okay, let's try that again and just move it to the side until you see that nice um, um, smart, uh, I can't remember what it's called, <laughs> the little helper there, the help, smart guide, the helper guide there. Okay, so there's that. And then I want to reduce this lip size down by, um, let's see, let's go to properties, go to transform, and we can, in the X, no, I'm sorry, in the width tool here, let's type in 80% and hit tab. And then do the same here in the height, 80% and tab. So that's one way that you can reduce a circle size. If this was linked first, it, we would have only had to do that in one step. Oh, but she's looking really nice. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and make her eyelashes. So we're going to click on this same circle here. We're going to drag it over to the side just for now. We're going to fill it with black. And then let's use our delete anchor point tool and click on the bottom one. Nope, it didn't work the way I was hoping it would. So let's do this instead. We are going to make a rectangle and draw it right across the center line here. Great. And then we're going to select both of these. Go to our Pathfinder options down here. And we want to choose this one here, the click to minus front. There we go, perfect. Looks really good. So now I'm going to bring this eyelash back over here. I'm going to lower it down here and then just rotate it a bit like this. Just how Tanako did. And we're going to bring it down to touch the baseline a bit. And that looks good to me. So now we're going to bring it over here. I'm just holding down that Alt Option key again, but we're going to flip it this time. So up here in our Properties panel, we're going to select this flip horizontally. There we go. Now we don't have to mess with rotating and all that stuff. And we're just going to line it back up. That looks great. Woo! All right. One last thing, we're going to add a little gradient here. So let's make another rectangle. Click and drag. This one's going to go about a third way down. Okay doesn't matter what the color is because we're going to change that right now. Okay, that looks good. So click on your gradient tool. And then in our gradients panel, 
we want to change this black by double clicking on it to bring up our swatches. Let's make it a nice pink. And, you know, I really like that pink. Let me pull this up, the magenta. No, let's pull it back. Let's make it a little bit lighter. And I'm gonna pull my cyan. There you go, a little less blue. So it's more pink, that looks really good to me. We're gonna change this one. Here, it, we do not want it to be white, and you can leave it like that. You can, If you want, you can change the opacity to zero. That'll make it even softer, okay? So you can see that transition there. And then we need to rotate it. I wanna say negative, no, nope, positive 90 degrees. There we go. And we can close that. Click here, zoom out. Let's go ahead and hide our guides. So go to View, Guides, Hide Guides, and we have our piece. It's finished and it's gorgeous. Thank you so much for watching today.